Grid Legends is officially the first big racer of 2022. And I got to play it. Now, you know I'm going to take any chance to do this. We're going to talk about this game today. So coming out the gate, I just want to say I have not really played a mass amount of the Grid games. I actually jumped into the series pretty late. Grid Autosport was the one that I played probably the most of, which is mad to think about that so long now. Now, this is clearly a work in progress build. This is an early version. I got access from Cody's and EA basically to play the game, play some of the curated events that they themselves made using the race creator. There's a race creator in grid games. I think it was in the previous grid game, but obviously now they're saying it's better than ever. The usual can as you sh as you would hope, right? Now to catch you up just a little bit in case you didn't know, it has that black fella from Sex Education, that Netflix show. That it's I like I like it. It's good. He's a good actor. It's pretty cool to see like this blending of real and of course with actual gameplay in the game. This is something that Need for Speed did in 2015, and it was a little bit jarring, but at the same time, we used to do that back in the day in, like, Need for Speed 2005. Anyway, I'm, I'm going on a tangent here. I'm going to basically lay down the big take-homes of this game to you. There's some pretty exciting stuff in here, and, of course, I got to play it, and I want to give you my actual proper opinions as to what I think of this game. Now, the very first thing is I'm interested in the story. Having a story in a racing game is always something that's been like, oh, I don't know how to feel about that, but when it's done well, it's, be, it's created some of my favorite racing games to date. So we're going to see how that plays out. Cross-platform play is a thing which seems like EA is really pushing cross-platform play in racing games, which is tremendous for many, many reasons. Main reasons being, in case you didn't know, unless it's Forza, racing games don't particularly last massive amounts of time when it comes to multiple platforms. Like on FPS games, you get a keyboard. On a racing game for a keyboard, you're at a disadvantage in most cases. So to actually have the ability for games to last longer by just pure player numbers alone, that's always a good thing. I'm, I would never complain about that. Now, just before we jump into all the good stuff, all the good gameplay, all the fun I had and the most enjoyable moments that I've had thus far on this really basic early version demo, basically what it is, I want to give you that PR spiel so you know exactly what to expect. There's hundreds of events in the game, which I should hope so when there's a randomizer kind of builder in the game. There's over 100 routes, which is pretty cool to think of. And there's obviously 48 classes of cars. Now, that is particularly... My favorite bit about Grid in general, because we've got simulation races, we've got arcade simulcade races, there's a lot of them. We've got project cars from Codemasters themselves. We've got Forza Motorsport probably coming next year. We've got Gran Turismo coming a month after, a month, it's like a week later than this game. So that really does bring to you the question, who the hell is this game for? This is what I want to show you pretty early on, because this... This is something we're all interested in, especially as JDM Hot Boy is over here. When you see an RX-7 and skids, we're going to jump in on it. So what does this game provide in terms of drifting that the others don't? So first things first, let's talk about the handling. The handling was a little bit jarring to get used to at first. It's very much a specific, like, dedicated drift handling. You know we're talking like the underground days, but it has a little bit more realism to it still. This is by no means a simulator game. That's something that should be pretty clear to most people. I want to show all the mistakes, all the messing up, and then, of course, progress to my really good driving later. Now, I will say the events are a little bit odd. You can see at the top of the screen there, it actually tells you what the scores of the other drivers are. If you hit cones, that's bad. You lose all of your points. I don't particularly love how the scoring system works in this. I do wish you could keep them. Cones maybe bring down the multiplier. If you drift out of the zone, you know, it's meant to be more professional. But at the same time, it's a simcade. It's an arcade experience. It's a very arcade experience. I, I, I caught myself a little bit there. But as we progress through the event, you can see I'm getting a little bit better. I've got 66,000 on the points. But yeah, drifting is one of my favorite things that I did in Grid. It's fun. It's arcade fun. I'm very much looking forward to actually being able to try, like, all the cars, experience things like that. Just because I love games which allow you to jump in and just play. It's something I learned with Drive Club, which I was a little bit confused as to why that game even existed. In fact, I was a Drive Club hater, if you will. But in the end, when I got it, I was like, this is one of the best races I've ever played. Not saying that about Grid Legends. Again, I've played 12 events <laughs> of the game. But overall, this feels... Really good fun, nice to jump in, good to play, and it feels rewarding, ultimately, is what I'm going to say. Of course, we've got Gran Turismo coming out on PlayStation 
a week or so after. So that begs the question, would this be a good game for PlayStation people? Not sure. If you're looking for more fun into the point without having any like like crazy knowledge, and of course there's a story to this game, I think honestly you should pick up both. Having a dedicated kind of easy drift mode is not the only thing that this game has going for it. This is where, again, all my stuff that I've played and enjoyed the most is about to come out. This though, this is probably my top thing. The drifting, I enjoyed it, it was good fun. And I felt good. That's ultimately what you, you want to feel good. Now we're going from drifting to these trucks. Now these trucks are mental. They're the ones that like lean and go crazy over to the sides. And they have jumps in the event. Because why the freaking heck not? Now, I hated this. <laughs> I'm going to be completely clear and honest with you. This was horrible. Now, not I didn't hate it in the fact that I, like it wasn't cool. It was a very enjoyable experience. I just really really messed it up massively it kind of reminded me of when i played uh, the the big wang kind of track down force boys in dirt i just didn't quite get it I, I was i was trying to drive the car like a i would every other car that i'd been driving thus far this was the last thing i did on the game but it's just not possible to drive something like this in that exact same method it just leans and just slides and honestly it handled like absolute dog garbage absolute okay but it was it was kind of fun like i definitely want to put more time into these and learn these cars and that's ultimately what i'm going to say is my favorite thing about grid legends you get to try so many different types of vehicle as you can see i yeah <laughs> this race was one of my favorites so we jumped from driving a pretty slow car and i was like you know what i'm not playing these in order i want to jump into something fast it's a preview it's a demo and see what this game is all about and the aston martin valkyrie aston martin racing concept was definitely one of the highlights of this absolutely mental machine and as you can see my frame rate actually dipped this is an early build performance drops to 30 i'm running at 4k ultra and honestly it stayed solid 60 99 percent of the time considering it's an early build like that's really impressive and they told me not to mention that but you know realistically that's going to be smoothed out we already know but this thing is so damn fast the sense of speed everything is just tremendous and the amount of grip this thing has until you really mess it up i genuinely i have uh, this this was probably the most fun that i had uh, driving one of the cars but I, I messed up so many times it is not a forgiving car in the slightest you have one chance <laughs> mess it up and it will bite you in the damn bollocks there's no doubt about it. The music definitely added to the atmosphere. Music in a racing game, mega important, we already know. I personally would have liked some drum and bass and stuff. I think it always works in a racing game, but honestly, it's grid. The legendary, like, gospel-esque music definitely makes you feel like more professional racer than the umt umt of uh, Forza Horizon 5. <laughs> Another mega interesting race was with this Lotus. These Lotuses, it was electric only. It's always mega interesting to see what other people do, what the developers do with electric vehicles. Because when it comes to sound, I'm a little bit worried, to be honest with you. Considering the fact that they don't make any noise whatsoever, they should. Okay, so electric race cars do make a bit of a whine here. You know, a little bit of changes here and there. Mate, I, I went ham on this race. I just smashed into everybody. I think I had, I think I had more nemesis than I did <laughs> anyone else. But again, just to give you a preview, because I'm pretty sure you guys will want to hear it too. You know, it's all right. It's not, again, I can't say it's not the best implementation that I've heard because it might actually be one of the best implementations I've heard of electric car audio because we know they're not silent and we don't want to just hear wind noise. A little cool feature about electric cars actually in this game is you go through the zones and then you get a boost. And these three boosts are pretty epic. And I, you know, I, I'm a boost man. You already know. I'm a Need for Speed man, and therefore any boost is a cool boost. Give me the little, show us the little boost. Made a new nemesis, but here you go. A little bit of a boost, just kind of gives you that nice extra speed effect. It's kind of how it works in terms. I think Formula E has something similar. Again, I'm not particularly clued up, but 
it's a boost. Another one of my favorite cars that I drove in the game. There's actually quite a lot, but it's, you're getting the idea here that there's so many different cars, and that's where this game shines. If you look at Gran Turismo, you look at Forza, yes, they have the odd car, but haha, funny meme car. Like, we get a big truck, we get maybe a go-kart or two, uh, we get... I don't know, a Volkswagen Samba bus, but that's about it. You don't get these particularly crazy odd cars that this game really just does better than pretty much any game. Grid does much better in having the variety of different sport types. And that's something I've noticed with Codemasters games in general. They particularly try and push that area. And honestly, I think that's fun because normally I just, I'm a road car person, okay? I would jump to the road car, I would stay in the road cars and that's how it will be. But this game kind of makes me step outside my norm a little bit. Of course, this is a grid game, and so it does have a cockpit view. And we're going to demonstrate that here now. It's really good. In fact, one of the better cockpit views I've ever played. The car feels a little bit odd. The handling definitely is a third-person view uh, setup. The wheel support will be there. We, I didn't try it with a wheel. Uh, the support is not currently in this build of the game, so I didn't particularly try it. But they have a camera setup for that multiple camera setups that you could use. But this is def definitely a third person camera setup. Like the camera in the game, much better in third person. But this thing was awesome, super fun, super quick, and of course, much older than the Aston Martin. Again, this demo was set up super well for us to try these cars. And I think ultimately that's what they wanted us to get across is that this game is about trying different cars and having a blast. And you know what? I, I really enjoyed my time with it. So as I said, this game is coming out February 25th. If you want to check that out, that's the date. But let me know in the comments, what do you think? Hopefully this preview was helpful. I, I kind of tried to add in a little bit of everything, tried a little bit of a different style than the normal kind of, this is my preview. And hopefully you enjoyed it. Smash like if you did, dislike if you didn't. Let me know. Subscribe if you are new and you want to see some gameplay because this game is the next one and the beginning of the best year of racing games, I think, probably ever in 2022. Peace.